Well, you may know the groundbreaking movements and the hashtags that enabled them to spread. Black Lives Matter, Oscars So White, Say Her Name, to list a few. But only now will you get an intimate look at where they were born. CBS reports interviews celebrities, influencers, and thought leaders in a new documentary, Black Twitter, the Twitterverse that changed a generation. This explores the social sphere where black Americans and really black folks of all stripes started a community and ended up creating a pop culture juggernaut and driver of social justice. Joining us now is CBS News national correspondent, Jerika Duncan. She served as a reporter for the latest CBS Reports documentary. Uh, Jerika, welcome. It's really good to see you Always in good person. To be with you, all. Um, you know, it's interesting because on my social media feed, I will see stories or issues pop up that mm -hmm. maybe haven't quite hit the mainstream media mm -hmm. yet. Um, I'm wondering what are some things that a lot of folks might not know about black Twitter and the enormous influence, really, mm -hmm. that it has on issues, on coverage, on what stories actually do get amplified. I think social media is a big driver of how we cover news today, right? Like, we all came up in an era where we watched people who did not have that tool. That was our baseline for storytelling. And now we're seeing the shift of social media being able to be part of an influence in how we cover stories. But Black Twitter, uh, I think, has made a big difference when you look at some of those stories that you talked about, whether it's Oscar So White or Breonna Taylor, Trayvon Martin. These are stories that, yes, they were out there, but in some cases they were out there first on, quote, Black Twitter. And I think people wonder, well, what is Black Twitter, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I, I asked myself that question when I first heard it years ago. Like, wait, is that like a separate app? Is that <laughs> some place where, you know, you have to log on outside of Twitter? And mm -hmm. really, Black Twitter, think of it like this. A bunch of Black people commenting on something that has some type of significance, or it could be something funny, it's something you want to share, and a lot of people then begin to share it, and all of a sudden it becomes a thing. But it's usually, or I should say all the time when you're talking about black Twitter, it's driven by black people. Mm -hmm. um, and these are generally influencers that already have a large following. Sometimes they're not, like you'll hear in April Rain's uh, comments and how you know her following went up instantly after she tweeted the comment regarding Oscar so white right. and made that something mm -hmm. where now we saw changes on the board and there was more of a conversation about uh, perhaps should we make sure that we are looking at all films in the same light and maybe we're not necessarily given uh, this group of people the same type of attention for certain movies. I mean, all of those things are being considered all because you have black people essentially speaking up, bringing something to awareness. That essentially is black Twitter, but it's not a separate place. But it's a place within Twitter. What makes yeah. it so fascinating? It I mean, is, to right? your point, it's, uh, you know, you go from not knowing what it is and exactly. to realizing that when it comes to certain issues, specifically during the pandemic, I mm. noticed for myself, mm -hmm. there were so many black professionals sharing their unique experiences mm -hmm. with depression and anxiety, and other people were able to relate and agree, right. living states away, strangers. Mm -hmm. um, so why do you think it's been such a place for black folks to connect and share and relate and celebrate as well as, you know, share some of the difficulties and challenges. I think anytime you have a space that becomes commonplace, mm -hmm. right? So you have the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Instagram, these are generally the big ones, right? Mm -hmm. And if you can get millions of people together in this community, and now we're talking to each other, even though I don't know you, I'm sharing things. I'm saying something maybe uh, that you haven't heard before. I'm bringing awareness to things. I'm joking. I'm commenting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when you think of black Twitter, because I know it's, it's not so much about isolating people as much as it's bringing them in, bringing it into a, a cultural experience sometimes, things that are uniquely black. I like to look at the example of uh, Mark Lamont Hill said he got dragged on Twitter and we interviewed him for saying, you know, macaroni and cheese is highly overrated or something to that effect. <laughs> and a lot of black people, culturally speaking, you know, again, now you're getting into the roots of the South yes. and where we come from. Right. Mm -hmm. And you realize that that is a, a dish uh, that you don't let everybody make. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to make mac and cheese, you, <laughs> don't don't just, you don't make mac and cheese. And we're That's not true. talking the craft. Right. 
because you'll get laughed at for bringing that to, to any event I've been to uh, <laughs> within my family. So there are moments where you're laughing and you're learning, but all of it is about sort of this connected experience and also humanizing the black experience yeah. because you don't have to be black to, to want to share something that maybe you saw technically within the realm of black Twitter, right? right. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, so there are moments like that, like yeah. macaroni and cheese, and then there are, of course, <laughs> other moments that you know, are a lot more serious and, yeah. and shine a light on issues that in the past mm -hmm. have not been able to kind of emerge mm -hmm. as quickly um, as they would now that we have black Twitter and mm -hmm. we have this instantaneous kind of ability to share. Um, I'm wondering in the case of Breonna Taylor, um, it took a bit for the coverage to sort of, uh, according to critics, you know, kind of get to the point where it was a national story it on the level did. that 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 merited coverage. Um, and I'm wondering what role you think black Twitter played in pushing that story out, because there were so many stories like hers that mm -hmm. didn't actually emerge in the That's same true. way that hers did. Mm -hmm. So I think what was unique about Breonna Taylor's story is the more we found out, the more questions that were asked, we went, wait a minute, this was not just she became a, a byproduct of a drug bust. Mm -hmm. This was the police thought someone was at her home who really was not at her home, who they had arrested hours before. And I personally remember, I want to say it was in May, maybe April, but I want to say May is when I first reported on Breonna Taylor. And it was, at the time, police say, you know, and then we look at the police report and there are things that are left out, you know, the amount of bullets and amount of times that she was shot. Um, I think Black Twitter and that particular instance was vital in black people, which make up right black Twitter, in asking questions. And I think the more questions you ask, the more pressure you're putting on any institution or organization, in this case the police, uh, to answer those questions and be held accountable. So I feel like it always comes down to accountability. And, you know, even when you look at the history of the black press, I was reading up on, um, you know, one of the first black publications back in 1827, at a time when slavery had just ended in New York uh, City, New York. And the whole basis, when you read about it, is telling our stories that normally may not have been told. Wow. And that, to mm -hmm. me, is the essence of black Twitter. Mm -hmm. Still relevant, still significant. Still relevant Still today. needed today. Absolutely. Um, folks can listen to the Twitter spaces you did with Roy Wood Jr. <laughs> yeah, yesterday yeah, yeah, about fun. this as well. And, of course, the special is streaming. Jerika Duncan. Always great to see you, my friend. <laughs> Always good Thanks to see you guys, with too. Us. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Um, and, of course, yes, you can watch the new CBS News uh, Reports documentary, Black Twitter, the 21st that changed a generation, tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can also watch it anytime for free on the CBS News app and Paramount+.